Hello and welcome to an artist opus tutorial on how to airbrush power weapons. No, we're not airbrushing anything. Uh, that is 100% not only dry brush but stipple. What I'm going to be covering in the tutorial is how to do that and then also at the end how to polish it with a little bit of glazing and edge highlighting to get a super high end result. We have come to it because of a lot of requests so if you would like something else to be done in the future then by all means pop it below. We take all of them on board and if you would like to know how to apply this technique with different colors or you want some suggestions or anything like that or you'd like to see a video where I uh, stipple every single possible color of power weapon then uh, let us know and maybe if we get enough requests we'll get to that in the near future. I just stippled this. I think it's awesome and I'm going to show you how you can achieve it. I only use three different paints, a couple of uh, Series D brushes including an extra small which came in super useful and it's a super super solid result that's even before it's been edge highlighted of course if you were to edge highlight this I think you could level it up and it's asking for glaze as well that's another thing that I think could go down really really well on this I may spend some time at the end of the tutorial showing you how to polish this involving other techniques but for now what we're going to do is I've got this guy's brethren and we're going to embark upon a painting journey here I have some Tami masking tape I think it's excellent you could use any masking tape but uh, this would uh, this would be my preference and I do think it makes your job a bit easier. Make sure I'm okay with that line. Press it down with the thumb. All right, we are masked. So what we're gonna do first is we are going to build up to a slightly lighter blue. We've got our Ahriman. You're gonna see me using the dampening pad a lot here. Basically at this point, we're trying to achieve blends that normally you would associate with airbrushing. And the way that we're gonna unlock those with a dry brush is to make sure that we are never using claggy, chalky, overloaded brushes with paint that is too dry in them. I know it's called dry brushing, but that's um, that's not correct for the way that I do it. And unfortunately it's just its name and we can't get away from that. So we'll call it by its name, but we are not gonna be using a dry brush at any point of this. So I'm gonna be removing excess, testing it on the palette, that type of thing. So what I'm gonna do is pick two points where I would like it to be lighter. I'm gonna go for here, kind of in the middle of the blade and then here towards the end of the blade. It should allow us to have a big, nice dark section right in the very center. Now you do need to brace the back of this blade because otherwise it's gonna wobble all over the place and that's not gonna help you with anything. So you can see here I'm building up these sections. There's not too much difference between its base color and the color that I'm adding now. That's fine, I'm not looking to do anything extreme. This is just to lay down something so that whatever we do next doesn't look too over the top, basically. We're not trying to make, uh, you know, crazy, uh, crazy transitions with our very first step. We are just laying a foundation. And like I said, it's fine for that to be subtle. There we go. Now we can head towards a slightly lighter color. So at this point, it's just literally a matter of adding more of our white to the mix. Obviously, if you were transitioning through a green to a yellow or something like that, you could be adding in different colors here. I'm just going to be adding a higher proportion of the white to the mix. Testing it on my palette, testing it on my thumb. Making sure what we've got on there is pretty subtle. If your dampening pad makes it too wet like mine did there, just, you know, remove the excess. It's not something to worry about. So within those sections that I put down, just like any highlighting, you put down a bigger section. Now this is gonna cover a smaller section. I'm patiently gonna stipple these towards a slightly lighter color. I'm using a small here. It is gonna to begin to feel and look on camera to be a bit big for the task in hand. After the next step where I've added a little bit more white, I will be transitioning to the extra small and that'll give us a greater degree of control. Okay, so that's a little bit heavy handed there. Don't worry, that can be fixed. Just make sure they're on the back of my thumb that we don't have too much paint there. If you do get little imperfections appearing, uh, you are using a random technique, it is gonna happen. Don't worry about it, it's not the end of the world. It can absolutely be fixed. Quick tip here, if I push all of my stuff back. If you ever see my brush disappearing off camera, uh, top right, bottom left, whatever it is, I'm probably doing this. And what I'm doing here is using my dampening pad and the edge of my texture palette, I'm carefully flicking my brush backwards and forwards. And this is to avoid letting the paint that has dried out on my bristles build up in a negative manner. Because I've got some white backing paper here, I can see how much is coming off. So 
that process, it's a piece of wood, it's not too hard. Flicking it backwards and forwards off that corner stops me from building up any excess. Uh, these are pretty old brushes, they've been used a lot and they're in fairly good condition and this is one of the reasons why. So we're now onto a teeny tiny brush. You don't see me use uh, this often on the channel. The reason is because it is minuscule. Uh, when you do use it though, it has got some pretty amazing unique properties that really, really are extremely helpful. So be aware when you are using it of just how small it is. That sounds like an obvious thing to say, but you know, you can completely saturate this if you take too much paint at any point. So when you're taking your paint, do so with care. And everything with this needs to be done on a smaller and more delicate scale including using the dampening pad, you know, everything. But what you gain for using something small is the degree of control that hopefully we're going to begin to benefit from here. So exactly the same way as we were, I'm going to start stippling into the middle of those sections. Obviously this brush is way smaller now, bracing against the back of my thumb, of course. And then we're just going to build up a higher percentage of white until we're at the point where it's almost a pure white. We've just got some of the, we're using the same point on the palette where the blue was. So even if we don't go and fetch blue, there is going to be blue mixed into our white. Whoops. Okay, so there you go. Didn't remove as much as I should have. We will be able to fix that though. Rather than deleting it, I will show how to fix it because this may happen to you guys. We are trying to do something subtle here. So I'm just going to buff it out basically. Fair patience goes a long way. Now at this point where it feels like I'm struggling to make it any brighter than it is with the stippling, what we're going to do is we're actually going to jump to the shadow. Here is a brush I cleaned earlier. Hopefully we can benefit from that cleaning I did off the edge of my palette before. Back to the same brush we started with. And what I'm going to be doing is going in, taking a little bit of our mid-tone and then some Holger Blue, surprise, surprise. Mix them together. The brush is fairly damp. Hopefully you can see that there. And then in these sections that are already darkish, straight in the middle, I'm looking to do exactly what we've done with the highlights, but I'm doing it with the shade color, so I'll do it on the edge. Very, very bottom of the blade as well. As I spoke about, we've got that bit that I'm not particularly pleased with where there's a chip. Try and fade that out. And then we're doing the exact opposite of what we did with our previous color in terms of uh, just adding a higher proportion of our highlight, but this time we're adding a higher proportion of our shade. So that holder percentage is just being increased. Make sure you continue to test it on your palette, on your hand, wherever, and make sure you continue to use your dampening pad. This is, this is soft work. It's an extreme color. So if you go in too heavy handed with this, you will really know about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is use my damping pad, give it a bit of a flush. I'm gonna take a fairly large amount, proportionally by my standards, not by normal painting standards, of the holder, work in from all angles, go to a lighter section of my palette, see how it's looking there. Then with this, I'm gonna stipple carefully into the middle of these sections. This should build up to the darkest color that we have on our blade. Again, if anything looks too patchy, just keep working it carefully. Buff it out, persevere. Don't try and make any big movements. Just continue what you were doing. Build up to that nice dark color. Always bracing your blade nicely. If it flexes, the dry brushing will be bad. You, you always have to have a nice secure point that you're pushing towards. With the addition of the shades, our highlights are actually looking a little bit brighter. Jump straight back to this brush now. Make sure it's not dry. Harder to tell on such a small brush, so take your time. Go to that white. Work it around those bristles. We don't want any patches appearing. Cool. So now at this point, I'm happy with how bright it's gone. I'm actually gonna clean out this brush completely, or as close to completely as I can get. And we're going to use this with the Holger Blue to employ our final shades. So I flick this backwards and forwards a lot on my hand. I do not want it wet. That will lead to some very upsetting effects. Damp is fine. We don't need wet. 
work off the excess, make sure it's not going to do any streaking or anything like that, and then right in those central sections, we're going to bring in our darkest color. There we go, looking awesome. So obviously we've done that with dry brushing. You could absolutely use glazing and other stuff and that's what we'll touch on at the end of the video once I've done the other side of this guy's weapon. For now though, what we're gonna do is the reveal. Be careful when removing this tape. Don't, don't get your sharp, scrapey metallic sections anywhere near to the model. Beautiful. All right, looking great. Okay, so hopefully that showed up all right. I made quite a few mistakes there. I started off trying to rush it. Uh, bad idea. Don't try and do that at all. It seems the most important thing for this technique is to just take your time and be chilled. And if you do make a mistake, be patient in fixing it and the fixing is pretty much always the same which is just to buff it out. So that's turned out even better than the last one. I think part of the reason for that is going slightly darker and keeping more of my mid-tone. Um, I'm really pleased with that. They're very high quality for stippling. If you do want to edge highlight with your dry brush, very simple when you've got the final steps in terms of the whites there. I tend to do it at an angle down the blade but just carefully in one single direction. Place it like that. If you're doing it across the middle, you do it in the same way, but you do it exactly like this. Now you can edge highlight with a brush and do some other things. I'm definitely gonna have a play around with this, but for, for dry brushing, that is incredible. I think that's really good. It's my second attempt and it's much better than my first. So you know, after you've done two or three of these, you could be in a spot where you're doing something really, really high quality. This one's worked out a little bit better than the one that I just did. It's fine though, what I'm gonna do is lay down some water on the surface, grab a little more holdra. I'm basically using this as an ink or a glaze at this point. It's a very good saturated paint for doing that with. You could use a contrast though, if you've got a particular one you wanted to use, or I mean, if you were doing a green, you could be using a deep, a deep uh, purple in the recesses or anything that fits with what you're doing. I'm just looking to push what I've got here a bit, and this is a particularly efficient way of doing it. Just doing one blob and then pushing back into it a couple of times from each side with liquid to soften that transition. So I'm pretty pleased with how that's looking. Uh, I've just pushed the darker sections a little bit. You could absolutely go darker. You could even, you know, you could go to black if you wanted. I'm fine with them as they are. Um, you could also glaze the entire thing if you wanted to make it super bluey. Um, what I've got here, however, is I've got a little bit of scale 75 white on my palette. The reason I'm using this white is actually because it's not got fantastic coverage as far as white goes. And I don't want to use the monument because it's crazy good at um, just coating anything. This has got a little bit more in terms of medium and extenders and drying retarders and stuff like that in it. So it should be slightly more forgiving for me to work with. So I'm going to pick a middle section in exactly the same way push towards it from either side and try and keep it quite soft. Again, once I've done this once, it will get easier and less worrying. Much easier on the end because you only had to come in from one side. So what I tend to do is fuzz it out a bit, pull it out and then push into it. You can do this as much or as little as you like. You don't have to do this at all. It's a very good way to ruin things if you do make a mistake. So. Um, I just think it's worth pushing these a tiny bit more. That didn't go completely smoothly. There's a couple of little poopy bits here, which hopefully I'm going to fix with the edge highlights. Um, if I'd spent more time doing it, then it could have uh, definitely come out better. But what you can see there is the increase in contrast you get. You could have done this with an airbrush as well. I know it sounds weird to mix stippling and follow it with airbrushing. It's absolutely fine. Same with the glazing, anything like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop an edge highlight down on this and see where I can push it to. I'm going to use the same uh, scale 75 white initially for the edge highlight and I do a soft one. And then once I'm confident with it and I've got my eye in, because I don't often, I don't spend my time edge highlighting too much these days. Once I'm confident that I'm, uh, I'm working okay and I'm not going to screw it up, 
I may well include the, uh, the monument Bull Titanium White and use that. Now it is important when edge highlighting to not have too much paint on your brush and to have it at the right consistency. One thing you can do is just test it on the edge of your base. So I'm cool with that. I'm gonna be approaching these edges. Uh, first of all, I'll do it at a kind of 45 degree angle. Now the reason for doing this is when you look at it from the front, um, I won't have completely, uh, you know, mauled it um, if I'm trying to go at this angle. The middle one is going to be the hardest. We'll approach that once I'm confident with how the, uh, the brush is behaving. But that one came out well, so I'm happy to proceed to the other side. You can dictate how much of it you want to come onto the front edge by changing your angle. So if I went at this angle, it would be more, and if I went at this angle, it would be less. Now is the point which I uh, dread the most. I'm going to test on the edge first. And what we've had there is my paint started to dry out slightly in my brush. I could just feel it. It was taking too much pressure and you don't want to be having to apply too much pressure to get the paint to leave because if you have to do that, you're at risk of uh, pressing down too much and putting down a great big splodge. Another reason to use scale 75 paint is because of the, um, obviously if you're super competent uh, and confident, then this doesn't matter so much, but because of the extended drying time, if you do screw up, you can just go in there and wipe it off before it's dried. So it's not gone perfectly, but I am happy with that overall. And I do have the option, if I wished, to go over that with Monuments Super White. That looks pretty tasty though. Mix up that bold titanium white. Now, as I said, this is, this is as permanent as acrylic white gets in terms of my discoveries so far within painting. So I'm gonna make sure that this is flowing from my brush in exactly the manner I want, at exactly the quantity I want. That quantity is really, really important. Seems good. Again, we can go and practice somewhere on a miniature, ideally on an edge that has the same angle. This has got a very sharp edge, so it's easy to highlight sharp. Uh, this has got a softer edge, so perhaps a better indication. I feel a bit too much is coming off that. Let's remove that, test it on one of these edges. Do it on the, do this on the sections that are close to where I've highlighted uh, with the white on the model. And now let's carefully flatten my brush to give my brush an edge. Just need less paint on it, I think. There we go. So as I always say with a lot of things, at the point in which you're fairly happy with it and you haven't screwed up, that's not a bad point to decide to just. And we are done. So there we go. Final result again, the 100% stipple result, which was my first attempt. My second attempt definitely came out better, a bit more contrast in it. Really pleased with those, super solid end result. If you want to work on, or indeed are just more practiced uh, than I am at edge highlighting, and using some subtle glazing with inks. I use the scale 75 ones on these. You could take it up to this level. I think that's really worth doing if you wanna draw attention to anything in an army. The other particularly efficient one to add to what I've done in the video is to vary the shades on the edge of the blade. So if you've got a light point here and a dark point here, you'd highlight this up to kind of like a mid, uh, somewhere between your mid-tone and your highlight. And this one you take right up to white and then you get that effect of a, uh, like proper points of reflection on the blade or even glowing points or something like that. And of course you could put lightning on it if you wanted. If you'd like me to cover other colors of power blade uh, in a future tutorial or specifically for your army, let me know the colors that you're using. I'll do my best to sort you out and any suggestions you've got for future videos, please do pop them below. We read each and every one and uh, videos like this are a result of us getting fantastic suggestions from you, the viewers. All right, that is it. Thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next video.